Hello, everybody. Welcome. We have Michael Wan with us today. I'm super happy to have him on. I love the way you think, Michael. I love um, the stuff you've you've been exploring and I've been watching uh, on your on your YouTube channel and together with Emily, who's also been on the show before. Um, and yeah, so super happy to have you on. How are you? I am doing well. It's uh, 10 a.m. my time. It's a day after the eclipse, and I'm happy to be here. I'm uh, happy to um, have this conversation, make a new friend. And I'll tell you, I don't know why this like excites me so much, but like uh, when I saw you're in Uruguay, correct? Yeah. And when I saw that, like, you know, just the idea of, and we talked about this a little bit before the, the, before we started recording about like people in different time zones. Like, I don't know what time zones are. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't claim to know anything, but I do claim to like point out like some of the obvious, like the idea to talk to someone uh, in a different time zone, like what is that difference which we have? And so that really excited me. I'm very excited that you uh, invited me on your show and, and, and happy to see where this is going to unfold. This should be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think so too. Um, yeah, before we started recording, we were, we were uh, going a little bit into, into time and I'm thinking, I, I tried to, to, to bring some structure, but I also love uh, this free, free form conversation, just like two, two people just having a, a, a fun time. And I think people enjoy listening to that kind of stuff too. So, I so I think let's talk. Can, I want to talk a second about time. A second about time, right? <laughs> you know, so much of our language, it like is is time oriented. Mm -hmm. I think about time a lot, under the context of how it sets um, the structure for how we live our lives. Because to me, that's like really like there are multiple, multiple levels of reality. And I certainly don't think I know like any of the deep stuff. But like somewhere like you know in that middle area. Uh, I like to go and play and examine. And I think time is very, very significant. And to me, whenever I, I, I want to go into a topic, I try to get to um, as objective of, of a truth as there is, and then play with the subjectivity and more so being able to understand the different um, the different components that make it up. So when we think about time, you know, in a certain level, and I, and I say this a lot, like, you know, time is, time is a, is an abstract. It's false. It's not a real thing. Like, obviously it is real. Like, you know, we were able to say that this is the moment that we're going to meet up together and we're able to coordinate our schedules. And so time has a place for that, but then timing is, you know, I always say like mm -hmm. timing is what matters when two things have, uh, occur relative to one another. But that's not exactly true because we do have some markers which are, you know, as objective as being alive in a physical body wherever, you know, we are. And so we do know about, you know, the sun does rise and the sun does set. Like, you know, that is a real marker. We can see the moon and the moon's the interesting thing because the moon is like so inconsistent, like in terms of what a moon cycle is. It always plays between what, like 28 and 29 days, but it's not consistent. And then also kind of like the, the count, the number of days between like, you know, the, the most most amount of sunlight and the least amount of sunlight. And I think so much about like, you know, what was life like before we were able to slice and dice our waking moments to hours and seconds? Like we still were able to slice and dice it from like when the sun rises and the sun sets. And like, yeah, there were like sundials and maybe you could be able to have some sort of, 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 um, of idea of like what time it is. But then I start thinking, I'm like, well, what happens when the sun's down? Like, there, are there other like ways of, do you, do you get out of time? Like when the sun goes down, do you no longer keep track? What happens when it's cloudy? Is sun like, you know, and all of these sort of things. And, and, and I'm kind of being arbitrary or, or, you know, rhetorical as to these questions. Cause I'm like, you know, I'm not trying to be like a, a an anthropologist and trying to understand the culture as much as like start trying to understand the human experience experience and what would it be like if we didn't have that time you know how would we be different you know what what would the experience be and so i find that a very kind of like um again no conclusions as much as like something to really kind of think about 
And then we go back to like the computers, which is so much about cycles and times and stuff like that. And you know how this pulls us into this other sort of reality or at least way of seeing and thinking about experience. And I think uh, as far as I've understood, computers are, are very much connected to the work that you, to the, to the research you've been doing uh, or, or that you've done uh, concerning the, the what, what you call the Susquehanna mystery, which uh, we, we could maybe give a, a short recap of that uh, to, to give the audience an, an, an idea of what it's about. I highly recommend people go check out your YouTube. It's Susquehanna Alchemy, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes. And I, I, I'd recommend them go check that out. I, I did some like a, a binge watch from the first video and, and I, it took me a, a few days to and, and I went very down, very deep down that rabbit hole. And I felt like it's very, very relevant information that you found there and interesting conclusions that you've drawn. Um, but I know that computers, you just mentioned computers and time, uh, they are connected to it. Uh, and I don't know, maybe you, you want to uh, jump on from that. So, so thank you. And thank you for, for the opportunity to, to be able to talk about the, the Susquehanna. And that's... Uh, probably about five years ago, I got really into this research on the Susquehanna, Miss, on the Susquehanna River. And um, there was a point in time, like I would do like a decent number of shows and that's all I talked about. And I've gotten away from that. And I, and I think it's, it's appropriate for me to get away from it. But anytime that I can come back and revisit it, I think is, um, for me, it's very pleasurable. So, so I'm grateful for that. Um, and there... So a step back, I said this like before we, we, we start recording, like I don't claim to know anything, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm no guru, I don't have any answers, um, but my, my research does certainly come across with like an air of authority. And so, you know, I want to go and be the first one to dispel that, like there's no authority here. This is what I am. I'm a story friggin' teller. And the human beings are, are story beings. And really what I do is I break down stories. Like everything's a story, whether it's a story we tell ourselves, well, whether it's the history, whether it's the propaganda, whatever it is, these are stories and then they create our experiences. And this is true with every single story. Every single story is you can go and apply pressure. And what applying pressure is, is like really putting your focus, your, your like common sense, your logical mind, however it is you perceive reality and understand reality on anything. And if you put enough pressure and examine it, it's going to start to break down. And that's true in every context, whether that's like the world of science or the world of my history or what have you. And so I like to do that. And what's going to happen is you're going to break things down to as small as pieces as you can go before they're not going to break down anymore. And then you could re you could reconnect it. And if you do that, like, you know, then the story changes. So this kind of approach, this type of approach in terms of examining reality and examining the experience. And this is what's cool. Like I was doing this like years ago and like people, like most people who knew me thought I was friggin' nuts. Um, and then there'll be a small percentage of the population who'll be like, wow, that's interesting. Um, but now, because everything has changed, because everyone's story has changed. That's the truth which is happening right now in reality, is the stories changing for everyone. So like now it, it's like more like more than anything, this ability or this 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 approach to re-looking at things um, and breaking down the stories which we have assumed to be true. Um, to really like re-examine, uh, break them down, and to put them in new new pieces, it is it is I would say a um, it is a necessary survival school or skill because if you're not going to be doing that within your own backyard within your own life, you are going to be given someone else's story. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you might get inspiration from people like you or from me, but chances are it's going to be more influenced by the people who control the mechanisms of telling the, the big story. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Susquehanna mystery. The Susquehanna mystery was, <clears throat> I found myself living on, uh, in this kind of small town in Pennsylvania and I was going through this major like kind of transition within my life. And uh, I just got curious as it relates to, you know, what is this river? You know, what is 
the history. Like I always begin with like history and just because I like stories. And um, I began to find uh, that this river, that this river and its history, You froze up. Can you hear me? Yeah, oh, you're, you're back. Yeah. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. Your video started to freeze. What happened. Then your your audio continued, but now you're back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so the beginning to see all of these firsts and the primary firsts were happening on this river was the birth of the computer industry or even more so the um the this military industrial complex slash uh um, computer technology industry um the birth of what i'm going to say is globalism and then the birth of three wire distribution of electricity and what i mean by the birth is it is the first time that any of these things have taken form in like, at least in the historical perspective, the stories which were told, they happen on this river, they're tied to this river. And I kept on going deeper and deeper onto this river. And I found like, you know, it, it, there are indications in like very, very significant maps, the first maps of North America during the colonial period. Um, they all point to this river, like all this stuff like keeps on tying to it. There, the geology of the river is, is um, is is uh, very very unique, and you know the long and the short of it. And we could go into the details. I don't want to get caught up in all the details right now. The long and the short of it. The conclusion which which I reached was um, there was an ancient practice throughout Earth. You know, almost regardless of the culture. And, you know, one of the stories which were being told is like, you know, there was a mother culture. There was a culture which, which, which um, was across the earth before, like, you know, we've been given our new story of history. But within this culture, there was something which was generally referred to as river goddess worship. And what appears to, what, what the, the, the conclusion which, which all signs are pointing to is that this ancient practice of river goddess worship was done upon this river. And the reason why this river is significant is it, it seemingly is the oldest river on the planet. And so uh, the question, before I get into like why age is significant, um, well, well, let's go right into that. So, so a, so, I'll go into why age is significant, and then we want to go in and ask ourselves, well, what is a river? Um, when we look at the human experience, age is immensely significant as it relates to influence. So we can look at this from a lot of different ways. And so this is what I mean by like breaking things down to its smallest, po uh, smallest point. So like one of the stories which we know about, you know, the human being is that the oldest experiences create the foundation for your entire life. Like, you know, the stuff that happens in your first seven years that dictates your entire personality or, you know, all of the things that happen, like, and to me, it like really goes down to like the moment of birth, but everything builds up. So like, we know right there, age is, is, is significant, uh, or in terms of like, of the order of events, the older the events, the, the earlier events that happen upon it um, are influenced by the foundation. You know, if you want to go and subscribe to a story of like, you know, evolutionary theory, well, like the oldest part of the brain, you know, the, the, the reptilian brain influences all of the newer parts of the brain, the limbic, the, the neocortex. So it's like, again, the, the, the age, the oldest part is what influences the, um, the newer, the newer part. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, I'm, no, please. I'm thinking also, um, as far as we don't really understand time entirely yet, there seems to be some kind of an arrow of time, like going from the past to the future. So like karma ties into, into what you're talking, like what you do today will affect what happens tomorrow. So what, what you did or what happened in the past uh, will shape the future, definitely. 
in, in the most like, you know, we can look at that in a mystical perspective and we could look at that in the like most tangible perspective. It's like, you know what you like, you know, you, you've got like a, 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 a full stock seller, you know, of food. Well then in the event that you can't go and buy food for whatever reason, because a big snowstorm comes, well then you're prepared. You know, there's the karma that way. And then, you know, there's the more mystical aspect, but yes, there's like, and, and you're right from the, hu from our experience of being human is like, yeah, time is very linear. Like I'm totally, Totally open to the idea of time not being linear, but I have yet to experience the reality where with my conscious mind, I get to go to that higher level of reality and jump. Now, I believe people can do that, whether we call them people or not. Like, I think that that is part of like whatever the experience of life is. I think that's totally capable. But for as long as we are in this confine of like linear time, well, like, yeah, like that, that holds a truth. So one last thing about, about like the, the older parts, it is um, within like a, um, a, a, a community type structure, like a, a, of how humans used to live. It was always um, those who were the oldest with the most mm -hmm. amount of experience, who've seen the most, they hold the most influence on everyone else because they know more, they've seen more. And so, you know, we know that there's this truth on old influencing the new. So that is the significant of like the river being old. Um, but then it asks the question, it's like, well, what even is a river? Like, why would, why would like river goddess worship, you know, why would this be significant? Why would people do this? Like you would not do something unless there was, there was like some sort of like payoff. And so if we go back and we look at like just some general ideas and built into like some of our cliches of like, you know, water is life and like, you know, like the, 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 the flowing of water is life, like in a very like literal, maybe symbol, a literal symbolism, literal symbolism, like water is the ultimate symbol of flowing life, the flowing of life on earth, whatever the hell earth is, whatever the hell water is, you know, we're water beings, like water somehow through resonance, it deals with the, the movement of life on earth. And so one of the things which we know, and particularly on these other levels or deeper levels of reality, is resonance matters. This were like where symbols uh, uh, are able, dream interpretation, all this sort of stuff. Like resonance is significant. So now we're bringing this back to this, um, to this uh, like literal experience of being human, and we're looking at rivers. We're like, okay, well, all rivers. This isn't just the oldest river, but all rivers are going to have to do with the flowing of life. And I'm going to suggest, like, this is one of the reasons why other cultures are are you know the, the the people who lived on Earth before we lived in this sort of experience. They understood the relationship of the unfolding of life as to the water, which is where they found themselves. And like, yes, people took, people would take, um, would take uh, uh, um, pilgrimages to like maybe great water systems, but like whatever's in your own backyard, this is your own connection to the unfolding of life, not up in the stars. Not to say that there's not stuff up in the stars, but you know, it's a whole lot more difficult to access the stuff up in the stars than to go and put your feet in the water, which is flowing right where, where you find yourself living. And so that being said, when we go and we look at this, this river, the Susquehanna River, which is found on the Northeast of the United States, which is a river, unless you live in like nowhere, New York or nowhere, Pennsylvania, you probably have no idea what the Susquehanna River is. Um, and I began to see, so this is what, the first computer, the birth of the British Empire in the United States, and, um, and Thomas Edison's first uh, power plant of, of delivering uh, positive, negative, and neutral electricity, you know, um, these are all found in very, very specific locations, like where there've been geological changes on the river. And this is the oldest river and all of these people can be tied back into mystical organizations. And you go back and you look at the Bible, you know, I'm not saying the Bible is a literal truth. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. But what I do know for a fact is that it has had an enormous impact on the consciousness of the collection. So I know it holds weight and in the Bible they tell you like, 
you know, you build altars on earth in obvious places. And we see these as altars, as symbols. And what you put on your altar are the first fruits. And the reason why you would do that is you would put your first fruit of like, you know, whatever the first is in front of like whatever your divinity is, whatever you're asking for, like whatever you may be asking for. It's like, hey, I'm giving you this so that so that then there'll be more of it. So all of that being said, and what I've seen in the Susquehanna mystery, and it's like, you know, I could talk about for hours. I'm trying to give like this high level, this high level, um, this high level take on it. It is the entire river from it's, and it's a Y shape. You know, there are two main branches. So there are two main beginning points. And then it empties out into the Atlantic ocean, right at um, where Virginia Beach is, If you know where that is. The entire river is a river altar and there are the first fruits and all of these first fruits correspond with a certain telling of what is the age of Aquarius. This happened over a 400 year period. It was done by people who were conscious or unconscious. I don't know of what, uh, whether they were conscious or not of what they were doing and what they were trying to do was to bring upon an expression on earth you know, they're, 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 they're planting the seeds of a specific storyline time to this moment. Like the timing of what these things are, are so like, when you begin to look at it, you're like, I can't even believe this. And it is, it is being done this ancient act, this ancient act of river goddess worship of bringing about on earth, a certain storyline, which we are seeing right now of globalism, of computer technology, and, and wire distribution of electricity. These are all a certain expression of the Aquarian age. And this is, you know, it is being, uh, um, energy is being added into this ritual. The ritual ended on, uh, concluded, if you will, on May 12th, 2007. And all the research explains this and it's in the most fascinating ways. So it's all done. Um, it's on the river and like on the top of the river is the baseball hall of fame. They always have like their annual, uh, like the induction ceremonies. And that happens like on a, on a very significant day of the year, um, astrologically. And you could see how it's constantly being added energy and energy and energy into this river. Uh, whether people are aware of it or not, you know, we're adding to it. We're on computers right now. We're using electricity. We are on a certain level. If it's just a resonance level, we are adding to it and continuing the, 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 the support of this particular structure. Now, there are two things I want to say, and then I'm going to stop for a moment and allow you to, to share back. So all of that being said, like when, when you hear that story, it could be very like disempowering, like, oh, well, what do we do and all this sort of stuff. And that's not the case. The reason I want to share this story is you, you can see how the game is played. So then you could be like, oh, well, I can go and start playing this game a little bit differently, or I understand the rules a little bit more, or maybe I can actually be an author in this game. And so, so I share this information so that people can begin to understand what is their own, so they can begin to look at their own water system. And the question, like, what the hell is a water system? Their own history to begin to understand the flavor of what was done in their own backyards. Two, to begin to, like, if I share this story because I... Everyone is, is unconsciously connected to the Susquehanna story one way or the other. And by me shedding light onto it, I bring a level of consciousness to it. So we begin to play with, with this in a, in a more conscious way. That's what like the rights of the 40th parallel is all about are ways which you can have actual experiences and bypass like all of that, that other sort of stuff. And so that's why I really want to go and, and, and come back to the story. It's like once it's fascinating. And, and it's like you have a better context of what is happening and like who is, is doing it. And then, uh, then you can begin to, to have a more active role in the story which is being thrusted upon us at this given moment. And here's the last thing, and I do want to go throw this out. And it is very possible, and I'm very open to this idea, that all of these things were necessary to bring us to this point so that we can actually step into a much more, um, uh, to, to step into a flavor of life expression, aka reality, which 
is more in flavor with maybe some of the benefits of what we'll call globalism. The fact that you and I are able to talk, the fact that, you know, everyone here knows someone who pro probably knows multiple people from every continent and we know all of these languages 200 years ago that was not the case and so like our minds have changed in a way which recognizes our connection to other human beings on this planet i don't see that's a bad thing i want to get off technology i want to get off electricity i want to get off the internet but it has put in my mind an idea of how things could possibly be connected, which if it wasn't for these things, I would not have that idea in my head. Mm. I think of your idea you just mentioned of, of, of getting off these things. How could we, how could we do that? I mean, how, how could that, how, what would that look like? Uh, because, the, the ability that we have to, to connect with each other through technology. I think speaking with Emily, one of the, the times she came on, we, we, we mentioned that in a way, the technology has, has opened, like you say, of stories, has, has created a story for us that is, okay, we can connect with people in other uh, very distant parts of the world, for example. Um, so right now we think the only way we can do it is with technology, with a computer, for example. But perhaps, and most likely, we have within us and an, an, let's call it a natural ability, a kind of telepathic or whatever ability to connect with other people that we will start developing going forward. Like first we needed this kind of permission slip that, that is the computer to, 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 to kind of bridge the gap between uh, that, that sense of aloneness and separateness and the future of, of, a, of a wider connectivity, even connected to, you know, about the Akashic records uh, and, and perhaps a kind of, kind of global mind uh, of, of humanity. I, I don't know what it would look like without technology yet. So I love how you, you, you positioned it. So um, a couple things, I think, uh, and I, and I, I agree with you completely. So um, where we, we find ourselves right now, so this is, you know, this is what, from my perspective, this is, this is the, um, the, the, this is the, the, the good of it, if you will. Um, and they're all the stories, all the stories are always going to be positioned. We got to have villains. We got to have villains, right? We got to have villains. We got to have good guys. We got to have like, you know, that. So, so we, we, we position our thinking and our understanding of reality in stories. And there's a, and, and on, you can live your life without having stories. That's like a certain path. Like, you know, that's your, 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 your Taoist monk. Like they're like, you know, and you're totally meeting reality with as it is with no stories. And I think that's a fantastic. And that's probably like a higher, a certain level of higher of way of, of, of meeting conch of meeting life in a, in a really neat way. So, but I'm not talking about that. If you are talking about stories and you like stories and these sort of conversations, well then that's not the path you're on, or at least that's not the path you're on right now, because otherwise you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be paying attention to this. But that being said, if you were to go back, let's say 50 years ago, 50 years ago, and you were to talk to people all across earth, and you're trying to explain more or less what we think of as the internet right now, like a way where everyone could go and access, you know, you could connect with everyone, you could, you could store information, you can get information, like everything which we do with the internet. Like imagine trying to explain that to someone 50 years ago. And maybe they'd be able to get it, but each person is going to have a different version mm -hmm. in their mind of what that is. You're like, so imagine this thing and it's not, you know, it's, it's out there and you put, and it's not going to be consistent. There's not going, it's not going to, you know, uh, there's not going to be a, a, a gelation. Is that a word? I'm thinking of jello, mm -hmm. you know, like it, there's no form, but now, but now we all can, we can all picture, like we all have an idea, whether you understand the technology of the internet or not, is like, this is what the internet does. Okay, well, I could do this, this, and this. So we are all collectively, anyone who has experienced what the internet and computers are, you have a picture in your mind. You have a picture in your mind of what things could be a way of like accessing information and connecting with people. And so that is that permission slip 
um, that is that permission slip, which, which um, you make reference to. And it begins with, I think, an idea, a picture in the mind, mm -hmm. and a willingness. And so, like, let's go along the, I, let's go down, down this path for a moment. So good guys, bad guys. If you want to go down that dualistic path, we can do that. We're going to, I'm not saying that's the case, but we're going to go with that right now. So the bad guys, they created this internet, the web, the net, as a trap for all of humanity. Um, I think that's friggin' true. I think that the internet is dangerous. I think it's sick. I think everything, I think the foundation of the internet is the military industrial complex and everything that comes through it is friggin' damaging. Uh, I know that from my own personal experience. That being said, we, could we can still use this and we're still in this nature right now. But they had to create this in order to trap us. Uh, but at the same time, they've then shown us like this is, get a load, this is what it could be. And so part of what has to happen, in my opinion, is that we take the image which we have of how things could be and we move off it willingly we move off it willingly the internet has been designed to make you addicted no matter how you want to look at it it has made you addicted i get it I, you know we're all freaking crack babies right about now on this like it's not easy like you you know how it is meant to go and it's weaponized all of these qualities we have to of of how we are at the same time like you know so much of our stability of culture of family culture has been destroyed as well this has been like really over the last five generations and so we find ourselves in this place right now at the same time we're given this one solution what we're seeing has happened is there's one storyline which is being like forced down everyone's throat right now and you know that what that storyline is and the reason why that's taking hold uh, is two reasons. One is like everyone's been beaten down, beaten down, beaten down, beaten down, and addicted to all of this sort of stuff. Um, that like, you know, you're like, uh, I, you, there, there's very little like internal will left in anyone to want to do anything else or a lack of imagination or they were completely brainwashed. Um, and then the second thing which is happening is there has been a complete denial a rejection of any other storyline that does not meet it so that it becomes this like self contained reference so like if you are following the storyline if you're buying into it everywhere you're going is reaffirming the storyline so what is going to ha what's happening is for individuals who are like whoa i don't want to be part of this storyline i know that's not the path which i want to take it is becoming very, very clear. It is becoming very clear. Um, the rules of engagement are going to change. If you want to continue on all of the addictions which you've been addicted to, all of the systems which were been created by the same persons who created all of this, well, um, you're either gonna be in their game or you're not gonna be in their game. It's a very clear demarcation. There used to be a time period where you could live a foot in both worlds. Soon there's not gonna be. You're gonna to need to have your special passport. You're gonna to need to have all of your special apps. And so that really leaves, it leaves you, in my opinion, two different possibilities. One is this kind of like black market, uh, uh, dystopian, Blade Runner, uh, Philip K. Dick sort of idea of what the future would look like where you have like eyeball transplants and all this sort of stuff like that. They're like, oh, well, if you're not going to participate, well, you're going to have that. Or there's like a, I'm just rejecting it all. I'm rejecting it all, but I'm holding on to the underlying truth is there is a way, and I don't know what that way is yet, but there is a way in which all of the things which we saw before, all of the stuff which we were shown, which can happen through the internet, all of the things that we've shown before, there has to be a way because yes, this is an inversion, but it's an inversion of a higher truth. And what could that higher truth be? And this goes back to the Susquehanna mystery. And the question I asked earlier, which is what is the friggin' nature of water? And that's rhetorical. It's meant to like, well, I don't know. But are there other ways? And this is one of the things which Emily and I like to play with. Like, you know, you know, it, you have to be playful in this time. You got to be playful and you have to kind of be serious. It's like, 
the human being, in my opinion, is a travel being. We are meant to travel. The fact that travel is being stopped from us is as, is, as anti-human as keeping us six feet away from each other. All of that should be clear that that is not part of a storyline where to be. So there has to be other ways to travel. We talked about this earlier on. There's a linear time, but then there's seemingly there are other times, the other ways. And so out of necessity, out of necessity of what is being taken away, we are going to begin to discover it's the only way. It's the only way we have to begin to discover a new way of being where we are able to see these, you know, to take the underlying truths of what we've been introduced to and being able to express that in a way which is in harmony with our environment as opposed to an inversion or disharmony. What do I mean by that? The environment which we live in, and I don't mean this like an eco, more than just an ecological environment, the computer, to, in order to make this computer, you know, you got to destroy the environment. You got to destroy the human spirit. You, you know, there's slave labor to make this. We become slaves working on this. At some point, at some point, we're not going to be able to have this. At some point, maybe we're not going to be, we're not going to want to be on Zoom or YouTube or anything like that, but we're going to still have to, like, how are we going to figure this out? We're going to have to. That's where I see, um, that's where I see uh, uh, this going. Um, and so, let me go and circle back one more time to like the river itself. And one of the reasons why I know this river is so important, which is one of the reasons why I know why it's been, it's been hijacked. You know, I like to use the, the, the idea of a grandmother tied to this river and like, you know, uh, primarily because it's the oldest river, but there are all these indications of the significance of it. So I have in my hand right here, you know, if you can see this, I like to carry this before I, uh, before I get on any of these calls. This is a stone. It's known as a Herkimer diamond. And what makes a Herkimer? What do we got right there? Are those Herkimers as well or are those from your own? These? No, I don't, I don't think they're Herkimer. I think this is um, what you call it, a quartz crystal. And this perhaps is also quartz, but it has some malachite inside. And this one is what's purple quartz. I, I'm, I'm not very... Amethyst. Pro there's probably some oh, amethyst I'm, in it. So, okay. So, so this yeah. is fantastic. So Herkimer diamonds are quartz, but they are very, very, mm. very, 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 very unique quartz. And so I think part of like understanding out, we need to have new vision in terms of understanding our reality. So, so one of the most important things is recognizing like what's in your own backyard. It's not to say like, oh, I got to go and get this, which is on the other side of the world. And like, how am I going to go get that? That's disempowering. What's empowering is what's in your own backyard. This happens to be in my own backyard. And I think this is also worthy of a pilgrimage. We do take pilgrimages where we want to go and experience other parts. So anyway, this is a quartz crystal, which is found in one place in the world, and it is at the source of the, of the Susquehanna River. Only place it's found. What makes this unique? There are 16,000 different locations where, where crystalline quartz is found on Earth. But this is the only place where you find quartz which grows horizontally. So as opposed to growing up vertically, which means there is one point, this grows horizontally, so there are two points. You can decide what that means. Now, we don't even have, let's not even get to the mystical or the metaphysical aspect. We just know it's unique. The other thing is the water clarity that is found within them, and then what is also known as rainbow inclusions. Like, you know, they reflect light in a certain way that you see certain colors. These three attributes are only found uh, at the headwaters of this river. To me, that's an indication of, of something which is of unique and special of this particular river. And I think it's of the Grandmother River. We can definitely see that it's been uh, why it's so uh, uh, important in the history and then also within the geology. And we begin to look at things like that as how do we then go and begin to have the experiences which we think are probably um, the true human experiences on life, or life on earth. Everything is changing right now. You're, you're being sold one particular path. There has to be another door and we need to begin to go and start looking for them. And that's what I think is like, you know, it's, in, it's the new story has to sound like fantasy. 
because the old story is so conditioned, like this is all it is. Well, you know, if it doesn't sound like fantasy, you're still existing within the old storyline. Mm. And, and then there's the, um, uh, yeah, it, it's, but it's hard to, um, so I, I'll go, I'll, I'll try to, to process what I'm trying to say by going on to Please. something else. Um, like, I mean, it has to feel like, fan, to sound like fantasy. I like that, that idea. Um, but I think it also has to, has to sound plausible. So um, you mentioned the, the water, right? The, the nature of water. And then it, it, it dawned on me, you know, you're talking about the river and all that, that the water within all of us is the same water. So that, that is one point in which even at the material level, we are all connected. And, and so we, yeah. we could perform some change in, in one person's water and it would be in a way reflected on everybody else or something like that. I'm not sure how. And, and, this, and this research is out there, you know? What, what's, the, what's the Japanese scientist yeah. who like took all the pictures of the crystallized water and how like intention works on water? Like there is, and you are, I, I agree with you. This is, we, we exist right now. We exist right now in a very intellectual time on earth. We're all very intellectual. We're all really in our heads and we can't deny that. So yes, there has to, like the fan, there has to be a fantastical element to finding our way through this, but it also has to make a rash, there, you, your rational mind has to be able to wrap around it. You ha and so you're absolutely right. Like, and I think that's part of the way of, of uncovering this, this you know, quote unquote mystery is like you use your, your rational mind. You're like, you're absolutely right. That water which is in you is the same water which is in me, which is the same water which is circulate, circulating around the, the globe. It's the water that goes through me and then you piss it out and it goes in and it like all of that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, we're connected. Go back to the question. What's the nature, what's the nature of water? You know, well, hold that is like just an open thought for a little bit. And like you find that dance between like being very like rational and like this makes sense to then also being fantastical to be like, well, you know, I, you go back to that Sherlock Holmes sort of quote, like, you know, you eliminate, you eliminate all the, all the, all the things that can't be and whatever you're left, regardless of how ridiculous it sounds like, you know, that's the truth. You know, uh, I'm saying that more in a playful way in terms of like beginning to find our way out because the only options which you and I have been really given on a mainstream level is you're going to go along the smart city path or you're going to go down the, the, the blade runner path, you know, take your choice. I'm like, I reject them both. What's the difference between both? One is more, more, uh more bright, let's say, than the other. What do you mean between the the, both? Um, the smart city and the um, and the Blade Runner? The Blade Runner is like a darker kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's like the, the smart city is being positioned, if you will, like I kind of imagine it like um, like a cross between Hunger Games because this is what this is what the movies do. The movies mm -hmm. movies are like we can't even. We're, I think we're just we're touching the surface on how how profound watching movies are onto our own consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's the mechanism of movie. And then once you realize that there should be some guardship of what you're going to put in your consciousness and also recognizing, I mean, it's the same thing with like being on the internet. There's a risk, you know, we're being affected every time we go on the internet, every time we're on the computers, we are deepening our addiction to a certain level. Um, but so that being said though, the, the movies are the, the, the mechanism of watching a movie, whether that's like, you know, in a theater or on a computer or on your own TV, what have you is like that it's very profound in, in how it creates the stories in your mind. 
But then the second thing is like, but we watch this because we can go look at the stories. And when you see the stories, you can, you can understand more so of what is being created. What is the mm -hmm. spell work? What is the magic of what's being put in there? So we go and we look at the popular movies. And so like uh, that smart city is kind of like, you know, the, the, the fancy city in the Hunger Games or maybe like um, – uh, what you see, what life looked like in, in, in Minority Report. Like anytime you see like all of this, this very like glittering sort of environment, which is stuck for, um, which is limited to a very small class of people. You know, that's like how the smart city is, is, is sold. But the truth of the matter is like if that, you know, in whatever reality that that manifests the overwhelming majority of human beings are going to be living like everyone else in the hunger games or what there, what was that other movie called like a ready player one um like it's it's going to be the most anti-human experience like your experience is going to be in the machine in the monolith and that's where you're putting all of your energy and all of your 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 value and you're just feeding this thing and it's 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 like a it'll be like a vampire like quite literally feeding off of all of the people and this is true with all of civilization like you know hierarchical civilization is set up in such a way that the people in the pot on the top are literally feeding off of all of the people who keep them bo boosted up. Like that's the model. And, uh, this is why I said in the beginning, like I'm no guru, I'm no teacher. I'm no, I don't know nothing. We're all, you know, there, there are certain levels of hierarchy, I suppose, just in terms of age and experience, but there is also like, we want to be very, very loose with that hierarchy because the flip side is very hierarchical systems are always based upon the top feeding off of the bottom. And that is like, if you're going to be in that system, it is always going to be vampiric or parasitic, or however, whatever words you want to go and use to describe it. So like we, we're, we're recognizing these truths. And so we, what we have learned from these experiences, we can know for what we're looking for when we are um, moving into whatever is going to be uh, the the next iteration of, of life, of your life, of my life, of everyone's life right here on earth, whatever the hell earth may be. Hmm. Uh, th that next iteration. Yeah. I keep thinking how, how we could continue, um, continue having the, the connection that, that, that the, for example, the internet makes possible. Like, yeah, it has to be fantastic because I, the only ideas that I that I can think of is telepathy or or learning through through through. I think something that's that's been a, in you know how everything has its its yin and its yang. So this situation of of um, that's been going on during during all of this year, I think it's helped. It's brought people, some people of course. Um, more in contact with their own selves so more people have started getting interested in in um, in spiritual work be it uh, i don't know meditation to 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 self growth and and even um entrepreneurship and learning more about themselves because i mean all those processes require a, a self awareness that mm -hmm. that that didn't used to be very normal among people and now it's becoming more normal so this could help us, I don't know, maybe there is like a number of people that, that tap into a certain amount of, of self-awareness in themselves that generates that 100th monkey or whatever, that there you go. Uh, there suddenly you, there uh, you go. an ability might, might, might uh, awaken within, within all of us. I don't know. <laughs> it's so very interesting to think. So, so I, 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 that makes the most sense to me. I said this in the beginning, like, you know, we always need to have villains in our stories, but maybe mm. there aren't villains. Mm. What you were saying is a truth. Like this, this scenario, this scenario has brought about something in human, in human beings, which they would not have had to have mm. faced had this scenario not occurred. And this is what I think is the most interesting about what's going on is it's worldwide. Like what you're saying is true anytime, like, you know, mm. if this was in your particular corner of the, of, of the earth or, you know, that's not happening right now. Everyone is kind of like in the same sort of situation. So 
all of humanity is kind of like dealing with something together. Um, and what you're saying is what has always been described as, you know, the, the potentiality of human, of humanity of like, you know, it beginning with like a, a group of people of being able to hold a certain space. So then more people would be able to step into that space. And like, as it begins to grow, um, but let me go in and offer this as an idea. Now, I'm not saying this is true, but this is the sort of things which I think we need to start to play with. Um, so, all right. So, you know, let's say you got your crystal. And remember, every place on the earth has their crystals. And your crystals are where you upload your information. You know, you've got yours with, your, with you. I've got mine with me, you know, and whether it's a crystal or it's a stone or it's something, probably crystal because the crystalline, uh, they've told us so we can picture in our minds that there is a certain fabric, a molecular fabric that makes crystals separate from just like other material, like quartz crystals are, have a different molecular structure than just regular quartz. And because of this, it can hold stuff. And what can it hold? It can hold your thoughts and your ideas. And so you upload whatever it is, which, which is in this, this, this is your computer. This is your hardware. And let's say when you go and you put your feet in water, you're like, this is where you're going to upload your information onto the cloud. But you know, what is a cloud? That's air and water, right? You know, that's where it is. And so this is where we have like the same sort of thing, like just as what you would do with your computer and how you upload things on YouTube or you'd upload things and you would do that. And so you would go into the water with your crystal and you would also like, you would query. You would query in the same way you would query Google. Like they're telling us the model. What you need to do is take that model and apply it to something that does not require a price of admittance. So the, the model which, which is the prison of this, of, the, of, the, of the system, one of the underlying qualities of it is you have to pay a price to admittance just to be part of it. That's your taxes, that's your birth certificate, that's your social security number. It's all of that. This is the price of admittance. And like, that's not true. That is not a fundamental truth. Maybe there's a fundamental truth in the fact that if you're going to be alive on earth, there is a price of admittance and that's your like breathing, your inh inhalations and exhalations. You know, maybe there's something like that. There's truth to that. I'll go to that. But there should not be something based upon a financial system, which is based upon um, artificial scarcity where some people have it and some people don't. That is an inversion. That is false. That is, we know that it's not true but it is an inversion of something else. And so we know that, that if we can see this model of how information is shared on this computer technology layer of reality, all it is is a layer of reality, and we can take that model and apply that with our own creativity and fantastical thoughts tied into like some degree of rationality, be like, well, how can I replicate this in a way where there's no price of admittance, where I don't have to spend a thousand dollars to go and buy a piece of equipment and I have to get like a certain sort of thing? Like, no, like there, there should be something which is inherently true on earth. Mm -hmm. What that is, I don't know, but we are coming to a place where we have to discover it. And I think that's half the fun. Maybe that is the fun. Maybe that's the whole point of the whole thing. Who knows? But if you are not telling yourself a story, okay, if you're a Buddhist, if you're, if you're a Buddhist monk, if you're a Taoist enlightened one, well, you don't need to tell stories. But if that's not your path, if you're here a player, and if you're like telling stories, and that's kind of what I think of myself, and I think yourself, because we're talking about stories, you got to have a story which is empowering. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think people people can get lost in in the disempowering stories very much. And that's why I, I always want to to try and share information in a way that that helps uh, um, generate new ideas, perhaps in people, or or look at things in in new ways in order to 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 start changing a little bit the way we, we think and the way we, we visualize ourselves within the context of whatever is going on in the world. Um, and I was thinking about rivers again, um, and 
you, you mentioned the Susquehanna being the oldest and where I live, uh, we are, the city faces the widest, I think it is the widest uh, river in the world. It's the River Plate, Rio de la Plata. So it's... it's How wide is it? <laughs> it's very wide, I don't know. I want to I wanna see if I can show it on, on I want to see map. it. Yeah, let me see. I was... I mean, this is what, I, in my opinion, in my opinion, mm. in my fantasy world, yeah. In my fantastical world, when I envision what I think life on earth should be, it's like this sort of stuff, like a mat, like the excitement I would have, like, you know, that we love to travel and like, like, how would I get down there and, and to be able to go and see your jewels, you know, right now I've told a lot of the Susquehanna mystery story and I always, I, I don't always, but I've gotten a lot of feedback that it becomes like this competition. Like, it's like, you know, my team is better than your team. And I'm like, that's, that's the old, that's the, that's the system mm -hmm. mentality. It's like understanding, we're understanding the uniqueness of every sort of thing and understanding its piece or place in the story and then being able to go and experiencing it like i would love to be able to go down and see that with my eyes and mm -hmm. my and my understanding of reality and put my feet in that water and smelling your air and and tasting the water there like you know and that's what we do and we have mm -hmm. experiences and we meet people and then we and there's some people they're the homesteaders and they hold the space and the other people are the travelers and we have adventures you know, there's always part of the human story does include a drama. We want drama. We want some excitement. And so this is like, you know, this is this is this is the 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 vision which I hold, the potentiality. This is my smart city. So I would love to go and see the widest river. Yeah. Like I want to go and like, and you know, each person in their town to be able to tell their mythology. This mm. is the widest river on all of earth. And this is, and you know, when you have those stories and we get connected. Mm. I, I think, um, uh, no, I mentioned the, the, the idea of it being the widest, of course, not as a competition, but as perhaps it, it has some, some power in, in that. Just it undoubtedly like, does. Like the oldest. And even you, you shared recently um, a video of, of you in, in this place with rocks and they have like uh, straight lines that go across many rocks. There is something very similar in, in one of the places that I generally go to. Um, let, me, let me see. I'm going to share. If you can pull that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm going to share the map. Of the, of the thing. So, so yeah. let me... Let, let me just say this before we go yeah. in there, before I, I forget. So I would like to think like every, every corner of the earth, they have the, this is the most this or that. Like, it doesn't matter if it's the oldest or the widest. It's old. Yours is wide. And that does point to something. This is the quietest stream in all of the earth. This is, this, you know what I mean? It's like, that's the story. This is what we're looking for. We want this. We want that experience. And again, it's not to compete. It's to understand and to grow and to experience. Yeah. All right, now show me this. Yeah, so. Hold on, what am I looking at right now? Will you see that a little bit further? Yeah, of course. This is Mont Montevideo, right? So uh, I, can you see my mouse? Yeah, I can see your mouse. Yeah, so um, for example. Is that the I'm ocean? Pardon my ignorance with the geography. No, no, I, I'm going to... Am I looking at the ocean right there? It, it's actually a very interesting river, to, if, you, if you think about it. Um, but I'm living uh, like, like around, around here, okay? Okay. And so um, I'm going to zoom out a little, yeah. This is all of the, the city is right on the coast of, of this river, right? That's the river? Which is the Rio de la Plata, River Plate. Maybe Holy crap! Can, right? Do you know how to go and do the? Uh, uh, I want to go see two sides. Let's go to uh, keep on going out. Yeah. Um, so right, you see how it goes up into the left here, into the, mm -hmm. into the west. Here you have on this side. This is Argentina, and here this is Uruguay. Right, and so the the river like. Is that a city? Is that a city right where um, in here. Argentina is that like Buenos Aires or something? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. Can you pull out a little bit further? I want to see like the full continent and that'll give yeah. me my, my point of reference. Huh. Uh, we've got a, a cloud right where we can I, can I 
Huh? All right, I, I, I see it now. Yeah, I, I yeah now, now it's flat. Now it's flat. Okay, I, know like, no, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's flat or not, but here, right? So here is the, the thing. So it's wide because, because of how, right? How it's, it starts like um, this kind of triangle here that goes into the, the, the land mass. Right. Right? And so it's a very interesting river. What are you pointing to right there? Is that a city? Oh, no, that's Monteverde. That's Montevideo, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. what that is. That's where I'm at. And the, over there is Buenos Aires. How big, how, what's the population? Over here in Montevideo, it's uh, like around a million and a half, maybe. Okay. And then I noticed, uh, I noticed right on um, one of the points, it looked like maybe, uh, I couldn't tell it was a golf course or a park. It was all green. What yeah. is that? Yes. Right yes. there, that, that, where, which I'm seeing right there. Yeah, right, that's where, a golf What course. is that? A golf course. That's yeah. a golf course? Yeah, you can actually go there on Sundays. There's like between certain hours, it's open to the public. And I went there for the first time recently and it's extremely beautiful. Very, I would imagine. Yeah, very uh, surreal when you go there. How, how I would, clean what about right on the point? What's happening right on that point? Here? No, the, the city point though. Over here? Yes, what's that? That's just a, a building. That's not just any building. That is the point <laughs> of that entire city. One million people's energy is balanced on that. What is yeah, that freaking building, right. right? Well, yeah, it's built. So this. Look at that pool on the top. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. It's a, you got a, a good eye. Uh, this is a, um, what you call it, a, a boulevard. Yeah. Like yeah. The, one of the most, of perhaps the most important boulevard in the city. And it finishes. What's it there. called? What's it called? Name? Artigas, because Artigas was the. Um, the um, like the, the the hero let's say of the of the country the like the the main guy you know that fought against the right right uh, right 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 for, every, for the every country has one right yeah i don't know what what the name is in in in, in english for that uh, it translates to batman <laughs> correct <laughs> everyone's got their batman story right you know yeah, that's exactly. why these stories they they resonate so and then we have right here we have the uh there's the rowing club yeah, and um, here there's a, a lighthouse around here. Uh, where, which, What's the climate? Here's the lighthouse. This thing. Climate How is cold really, does it get during the winter? It, it, not that cold. I mean, it's, it's actually close to the 40th parallel uh, south, to give you an idea. So climate must, might be similar to yours. Do you get snow? Mm, no, no. So no, we get snow. So I'm thinking, oh, and then uh, I would, um, yeah, I would, uh, I would definitely love to go and take my trip down there. That's what I want to do. I want, I want to go and find the portals, <laughs> take the trip. They made travel horrible. Travel used to be, travel is the most amazing thing. Yeah. Like, you know, to be able to go and to be given the city tour from someone who lives there and understands it, like that feeds both ways. Because one, it feeds the person who lives there with the enthusiasm and the excitement of someone who mm. sees their home for the first mm. time. And then it, it expands and enriches the person who travels. Yeah, well, and what you said about this point, I'm gonna have to explore it a little bit more. Because... Will you do me a favor? You know yes, how you can do right. the street view on Google? Uh-huh, yeah. Will you do me the street view? I wanna see what that building looks like, particularly where the point is. That that um, green part. That's is, the I, that's out in the pool or where the uh, yeah you're looking there, at, the, right? at the river there. It's uh, or is that the or is that the uh, golf course? No, no, the golf course okay. is is a little bit uh, to to the to the right. Right. But this is called uh, Plaza Canada for for Canada, the country, and um, the street here we call it the Rambla. It's uh, called Gandhi. Why is it Mahatma. named after Gandhi? I don't know. It's, it's a very long street that goes all like along the coast and it has different names in different sections. And this is there is a connection Gandhi. between India and Uruguay? Like histor historically? Mm, I'm not sure. Like it seems unusual to me that mm. another country would name like one of their key roads after another country's like one of their cultural heroes. Mm. Now granted Gandhi is, is his, his story is known worldwide, but big still. Big Batman, yeah, for the world. I don't know of any Gandhi roads in, in, in the United States. Okay, all right, so there's mm. that building right there. That's the building. 
I don't know. That building's got a lot of power. There's a lot of like city energy, which is being mm. directed right there. Yeah. You know, whether, whether or not that's a, an enjoyable thing to live there or not, there's definitely like a lot of like city energy being put pointed right on mm. that round curve. Yeah. And you know, all the buildings are curved over there. It's, it's several different buildings and interesting, interesting point. <laughs> The, the golf course is the green area behind over there. It's on a, on a, on a little hill. All right? So we're, we're over there with the, with the little guy, and here's the course. So yeah, I wanted to, to give you a, 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 a small view of, of the idea of our, our own uh, interesting river here. I'm going to stop the share, OK? Well, I appreciate the tour and I would love yeah. to get it in person one day, one mm. day soon. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going gonna... like, you know, and, and start like thinking that way. Like, you know, mm. I, wanna, uh, we, I think we need to start doing that. Like when I say we as, as human beings, like, you know, starting to think about other plans outside of the plans which are being dictated to us. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I'm going to send you... Uh, I'll see if I can send you pictures when, when I go for the next time to that place with the, with the straight lines in the rocks. It's this area close to all this uh, part that I just showed you, um, where I, I think it's definitely with the moon, uh, the low tide and the high tide. And when it's low tide, you have a very, a very big uh, place full of rocks that gets uh, like uh, shown, let's say, or right, right, up, which you normally you don't look. have access to. Exactly, and you look at those stones, and it's pretty weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds like a fantastic place. Yeah, I think this feels like a good, a good, uh, a good spot for us to wrap this up. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I had a great time, Michael. Thank you so well, much. This was for a lot of fun, me. and I'm so glad we got to do the tour. I, I told you, like that was what I got really excited when I got the email from you saying that you're from Uruguay, and now mm. I got to see uh, a little <laughs> bit more. So I appreciate that, and we should do this again. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, and um, well, you have a great rest of the week. Uh, we we have the the. I, I'm excited about the conjunction on the 21st. I don't know what's what's going to happen after this. Next year is going to definitely be pretty weird. So, yeah, let's do this again. <laughs> that is for certain. <laughs> All right, my friend, and same to you. Enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, until the next time. All right, bye-bye.